Hi, so in this video I'm going to show you how you can use MIDI effects to expand the capabilities of your software synthesizers within Logic. So here I've just opened up an instance of Retro and I've programmed in a simple melody. So on my melody lines I like to have a bit of vibrato. One of the problems with doing this with Retro though is that because the vibrato is either controlled by the mod wheel or the aftertouch, there's no option within the synthesizer to fade this in. I don't want to have the vibrato on straight away. So just like if somebody is playing an instrument or somebody is singing, they don't immediately have vibrato, they fade it in slightly. And that gives the note time to establish itself in your ears. Like... So I could achieve this by just automating the mod wheel, but I don't really fancy automating the mod wheel on every single note I program. So a more efficient way to do this is to use MIDI effects. So if we go over to the channel strip over here on the left, above where you select the plugin instrument that you're using, there's a box that says MIDI effects. So I'm going to click on this and it'll give me a list of different effects that do different things to the MIDI. So if you've never used this before, it's very useful. For example, you can have an arpeggiator on any synthesizer, even if it doesn't have one built in just by using this MIDI effect here. But what I'm going to use is modulator. So Modulator gives you a LFO and an envelope, and you can send that to any MIDI parameter. So I've already saved a custom default here. I've set up an envelope going to the mod wheel. This is my most common use of the Modulator. If you've never done that before, you can save a user default by going up to this menu here, and then just click Save as Default, and then whatever you've got the plugin set to at the time will be the default. This is really handy as well for plugin simps if you want to initialize them, so like you have a very, very basic patch that you can start building things with, rather than some simps which will give you like a really complicated synth patch, when usually you just want a basic patch that you can build on straight away. That's really useful to set that up. So in this case, I've got the envelope going in the mod wheel. So it means that every time a MIDI note is triggered, it triggers this envelope, which is sending essentially automation data to the mod wheel. So if I play this now, you can hear there that the vibrato is gradually coming in rather than coming in straight away. So there's also an LFO here. So what I could do is open up the LFO and then in retro, I can have the aftertouch going to different parameters. So here I'm going to have the aftertouch controlling the filter cutoff. So if I select aftertouch on the LFO, Now that LFO is controlling the filter cough through the aftertouch. So the modulator is very, very useful to use with any synth that allows you to assign a MIDI parameter to a parameter in the synth. Anything like mod wheel, aftertouch, pressure, or some soft synths actually even have parameter lock. So every single parameter has a MIDI value assigned to it. In which case, you can always add an LFO or an envelope using this plugin and it stacks as well you can open up more instances of it if you want to so i could open up another modulator and have another lfo going to a different parameter so i could actually have a bunch of lfos on a synth that maybe only has one or two lfos built in so the power of this is that you can take a pretty basic synth like retro here that maybe doesn't have a huge amount of modulation options and assign new lfos and new envelopes to it which greatly expands the capabilities of that synthesizer. So something to note about this is that because it's using MIDI, it's all monophonic. So for example, with the envelope here, every time a note plays, the envelope is reset. So for example, in Retro, every single polyphonic note gets its own instance of the filter envelope. So if I play a second note, in a sequence, it doesn't affect the envelope of the original note that it was playing. 
So if that note is in the release stage, it's not suddenly going to have another attack. Whereas with this envelope, it actually would. Every time I clicked on that note again, it wasn't just bringing the filter of that individual note up, it was bringing the filter on everything up. So that's one thing to look out for with this is that in terms of modulation sources, MIDI is monophonic. The only thing that gets polyphonic modulation is velocity. Other than that, every control channel, every MIDI CC, these are all monophonic. So they'll affect everything globally. They won't affect things on a note by note basis. It's also worth noting that it is susceptible to other limitations of MIDI. For example, MIDI is only a 7-bit protocol. So basically what that means is that you only get 128 steps, 128 different values that the MIDI parameter can be, which in a lot of cases you're not going to really hear, but there may be some cases where you'll actually introduce some sort of stepping. There's also limits to how fast things can get with MIDI. It's not as much of an issue with this, but if you're using something else as a MIDI effect, for example, like Reactor, if you wanted to have audio rate modulation, that just wouldn't be possible through MIDI because MIDI's just not fast enough. I've tried it before and it just doesn't work very well. So it's worth noting that there are a few limitations to using MIDI effects in this manner because of just the nature of the MIDI protocol. So thanks for watching, I hope this video was useful to you. If you found it interesting or you learned something from it, maybe give me a like, maybe give me a subscribe. Maybe don't, whatever. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.